So we'll we'll go ahead and get started with Terrell, and then uh, when Daniel joins, um, I'll direct your let everybody know when he's in there, and then we'll be able to get going. So questions for Terrell to start. Uh, Justin Spears, go ahead. Uh, Terrell, how big was your relationship with Jason Terry bringing you to Arizona? Uh, I think it played a huge factor into it. Um, just, you know, growing up, having him, you know, guide me in a way from, shoot, since I was born, you know, that was my godfather. And then, like, knowing that he was going to maybe be a, the coach, assistant coach here, kind of helped a lot because I know I'm comfortable with him and then I can, you know, be adjusted to, the, like, the different, you know, um, I would say – City in Tucson. Yeah. Come from Seattle and it's totally different uh, than Tucson, you know. So, like, this having him here, you know, made it a lot comfortable for me. And uh, what's uh, some favorite memories that you have uh, growing up with him around? Uh, I remember when I was younger, me and my family went to Dallas. Not sure what year, but I was pretty young. On that team, they had like Josh Howard. I think it was like in there, like maybe a year or two before they won the championship. They had Josh Howard and, um, I was like a ball boy with every Johnson Jr. for one of the games. So that was like like one of my like biggest memories I have, like being in Dallas and seeing the NBA atmosphere and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how closely did he work with you actually playing basketball? Did he coach you at all growing up? No, he never coached me growing up. But like since I've been here, he's been a lot really hands on with me. You know, we worked out this morning. Um, I text him, you know, we watch film together and all that. Him and Coach Murphy, and, uh, Coach DP, Danny Peters. Thank you. All right, Terrell, can you adjust the camera or the screen there a little bit so you get a little more centered? Just pull the screen up a little closer towards you, like tilt it down. There you go. There you right. go. Um, next question goes to Alex White. Hey, Terrell, uh, two questions for you. Who's your favorite NBA player, past or present? And then what is the social media app that you're on the most? Uh, my favorite player – Past and present. Uh, I think it would be a tough one. I, I would say, like, you know, Cody Bryant, Michael Jordan, them guys. But, like, I just love every basketball player because they're good for a reason. They, You know, they do things differently. You know, you can say LeBron James. But for myself, it would be Cody Bryant. And my favorite app probably would be either Twitter or YouTube. Uh, I just watch a lot of videos and stuff like that. Okay. And then Twitter, how active are you? You watch videos on you? What do you watch when you're on YouTube then? Um. It would be like basketball videos. It would be some uh, gaming videos or stuff like that, like uh, Warzone, you know, uh, Fortnite, stuff like that. But other than that, um, just basketball and music videos or whatever. And then Twitter, is it just your basketball highlights too? Are you a, are you a meme guy? What What's the Twitter situation like? Uh, it's just scrolling, I guess you would say. Like I don't really, you know, get into tweeting too much, but I'll just scroll a lot, see what people are talking about. Uh, I'm not a big, you know, social media dude, but. I'll do check on it sometimes. Thank you. All right, Alec, uh, Daniel just joined. I'm assuming you probably want to ask those same two questions to him if you want. So if you want to repeat him, I don't think he was on when you asked them. Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, Daniel, uh, two questions for you. Who's your favorite NBA player, past or present, uh, that you like? And then what social media app do you use the most, if you use social media? Okay. Hey. Alec and uh, my favorite player right now is Kyle Leonard because I love the way that he plays on both sides of the floor and uh, I don't use social media at all, so I won't, I won't answer the question. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jason Shear, you're up next. Hey, Terrell, there's uh, some young guys on this team. I just want to know, do you view yourself uh, as a leader? Is that something that you have kind of stepped into or how do you kind of approach that role? I do see myself as a leader. Um, I think at first it was kind of like, you know, being the new dude on the team uh, was kind of hard being a leader. But like, as you, you know, continue to play and you're more vocal because the experience you've been through, people kind of lean, like lean on you a lot. So that's what like the role I got is being a leader. But also with James Akinjo, you know, his experience and Jamal Baker um, and dudes also that has been here before, like Ira Lee and uh, Jordan Brown, like they all are all leaders, I would say. But even like the younger dudes are stepping up, talking, be more vocal. And that's like an atmosphere that we want. And then, you know, James, Kerr, Jamal, what's that competition like in practice each day? It, it's intense. Like every day is intense. Uh, I know that we're trying to make each other better, better. But like, I think it's the biggest 
biggest competition I've ever been in for practice. You know, I put a lot of good guards in high school, but not. But this is more intense. Like we're going at each other all the time, and you know, like we, we everybody wants to win in practice and in the game, so it's going to help us for the season too. Uh, Bruce Pasco, you're up next. Hey, Terrell, kind of along those lines, but I was wondering uh, with you specifically what the adjustment's been like so far anyway from being, uh, you know, a, a real focal point at Seattle U to being one of many guys who are going to score and do things for this team. And, and, and has that been something I – mean, I know you've been in a number of different places in your career as far as having to prove yourself early, but really particularly the contrast between last year and this year, I was wondering what it's like. And particularly on a team where you've got guys from – all different kinds of backgrounds, yourself, grad transfers, freshmen from overseas, you know, et cetera, uh, returning guys. What, what's it been like for you and, and the whole mix of players? Uh, I think it's just me being more of a leader this year. Uh, last year, I was also a leader at Seattle U. But I think for like with a, a, a good group of guys, a, gr a great group of talent from, you know, Azulas, Kerr, Dalen Terry, Ben, you know, we have a lot of, you know, young dudes that has a lot of talent. And then also vets, you would say, would be me, James, Jamal, Ira, Jordan Brown, Christian Coloco. Like, you know, it's this that that mix of both and just trying to become more of like more vocal for everybody just to make sure everybody understands and gets it. Um, being being the focal point at one school and then ch being another guy here, I would say, uh, I don't think ch things change, you know. Um, you know, you, you can you, you learn how to adjust, you know, and that's the biggest thing. You, you adjust to like your strengths and weaknesses or not. And then you also like kind of like fit in, you know, you like you are, are, this is what I do. You know, everybody knows like what they do. You don't kind of like step outside the like boundary, I would say. Yeah. Well, can I also ask you, I was just curious with the NCAA ruling a couple of weeks ago that anybody who plays this year can have an extra year eligibility. Would you be interested in coming back next year for uh, for another year? If I haven't given you know, much thought. Yeah, I haven't given much thought. I'm just focusing on this season. Thanks. All right, Steve Rivera, you're up next. Yeah, hi. I'm just curious about uh, the chemistry on the team and how you guys have meshed with so many new guys, including yourself, and how you guys will play together, maybe some feeling for feeling out for each other. One, and the style of play, uh, how has it been to this point? Um, for everybody, like, you know, meshing together would be, you know, we're in the locker room. Uh, I think we're one of the fewest teams in the locker room this season. So, like, we kind of, like, talk, but we have to have our mask on and everything. But I think like everybody like hangs out like when we go get food, you know, a couple of dudes have cars, some dudes go to Top Golf and stuff like that. And then other than that, I think we have a strong connection. And then the um, what was the second question you asked me? Um, just the style of play, running up and down. Are you playing fast right now? Yeah, we're playing really fast. We're getting up and down on court, you know. Um, and that's like our our biggest thing is to you know we can feed the post inside with Christian and Jordan Brown and Azulas and Ira. But we also have a lot of good guards in the wings, so we can also get up and down. We can you know go one and three guard like three guards that's legit or like one and twos on our team but we can also go like a big lineup so we've been getting up and down a lot and maybe lastly did you see a lot of the tape from 97 when jt was part of the a big part of the national title they ran all the time bibby simon blah 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 what did you think of how they played and could that apply a little yeah i think so i think they had a lot of guards too also like that was like not you would say like it wasn't really tall. It was like maybe six four, six three, six six foot. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be like a, a big style for us to get up and down, just being, you know, in shape. And we want to like we pride ourselves on being the most conditioned team in the Pac twelve, just to get up and down. So like we really want that. Thanks. Jason Barr, you're up next. Jason still muted. There you go. There we go. Sorry, one question for each. Uh First, we want to start with, um, uh, is it Terrell or Terrell? Terrell. Terrell, yes. Just wanted to ask you to please repeat the first answer about your relationship with Jason Terry, just because you look so much better now with the screen. So just talk about, please, what he means to you. Uh, he, he's, he means a lot to me. Um, I mean, he's someone I can lean on. You know, I think here he's, he, well, he's family. So I kind of helps out a lot. And like, he's someone I can talk to about, you know, anything in the world, not and I can talk to the coaches about anything in the world, just in general. Like they came, you know, he, he has open arms for me and all the players on the team, everybody else can talk to him. He's a, you know, a goofy dude to be, you know, on the sidelines talking to and stuff because he keeps like that enjoyment on the team and, you know, keeps the atmosphere great. You know, like he's very competitive. 
he always picks a team during practice, you know, who he thinks is going to win. He kind of like boosts like, oh, yeah, we're going to get you guys today. And he kind of helps that atmosphere of like competing, you know, pride yourself in competing. Fantastic. Thank you. And also for uh, Daniel, uh, your thoughts on Tucson. Uh, certainly you're from uh, France. Any cultural differences? And uh, have you seen or heard of the Netflix show called Emily in Paris? And what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I heard about it on Netflix, but I didn't watch it yet. And the biggest difference from France and Tucson is the weather, and I really like it. Any other cultural differences? Mm, I think people are here are smile more, more often. In Paris, people like are more like cold and they, they don't talk a lot. They, people are more open to each other. And uh, your injury must be must be disappointing. Are you able to say if if uh, anything more about the injury? It looks like you're going to be reevaluated in January. Are you hoping not to miss the entire season? Yeah, so pretty, but right now I'm just focused on day to day, and I'm following what Gerard and like Justin um, Zakis Turner is telling me to do in the doctor. So we will see in January. Okay. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Justin Spears, you're up next. This question's uh, for Terrell. Um, recently, Arizona picked up a commitment from a, a Seattle area prospect. Um, you know, you're from the area. W what makes that area special for basketball players? Uh, I believe it's just, you know, for a long time, you know, I guess Seattle basketball has been overlooked in the state of Washington in general, has been like overlooked for like basketball skills. And there's a lot of good talent that come out of Washington that doesn't get like recognized, I would say. And, um, you know, for Shane Noel to come here is, is really big, you know. Just... Terrell, Terrell, we can't we can't talk about the, the actual player, okay? Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Just speak about Seattle in general, all right? Okay, yeah. And for the um, play, like the players, you know, Seattle has a lot of talent, you know, whether that's, you know, younger kids um, growing up, you know, watching them guys grow up to be who they are now helps out a lot. And, you know, for me, you know, coming to Arizona, can I, can I like, you know, brand the horizon of like, you know, maybe I can, you know, get to Arizona or whatnot. Hmm. And uh, what are some memorable uh, players from the area that you can recall growing up? Um, I mean, the first that comes to mind would be Tony Rowan. You know, uh, he went to the University of Washington. And um, of that goes Brennan Roy, you know, Aaron Brooks, Jason, uh, Will Conroy. There was a lot of talent there. Even like even like players I played with, like Tremaine Isabel in, in high school, um, Jalen Noel, Dejon Davis. You know, like there was a lot of talent still. And they're still, you know, playing basketball to this day. And did you ever uh, go to uh, Jamal Crawford's tournaments growing up? Yeah, yeah. Um, I played in his pro pro am about two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, and it was really cool. Like playing against, like playing with Tucker Heyman and stuff like that. Lose that, you know, just the Seattle culture of basketball coming together from you know Tacoma, from Renton, from you know out north. It's been like really good to just have the competitiveness on the weekends and stuff like that. Thank you, uh, Rich Herrera. You're up next. Good morning, Terrell. How are you? Or good afternoon, I would say. Uh, thank you for joining with us today. A uh, couple questions for you. Number one, can you reflect on the first time you walk into the locker room? Uh, you know JT forever, but you walk into the locker room and it's your jersey, your name, you're handed your gear with the block A and what that means to you to be able to follow in his footsteps. And this is the third team you've joined going junior college in Seattle University and then coming here to the U of A. You talk about being the new guy and joining a team and what the difference is between being a freshman and then Seattle and then coming here. Um, I mean, the first time walking into the, the arena was some, you know, special. You mean, you just feel like the history here, like the great teams from before prior to me being here. And hopefully we can become one of those good or great teams this season. But I feel like um, just coming into the locker room, seeing my own jersey of 31 and having Arizona is like kind of like a surreal feeling because like just the history behind Arizona. I have a lot of good guards, you know, got a lot of good players that came here. So that's been really cool. And what's the second question you asked, sorry. And then I was asking about joining a new team. So mm -hmm. you started in junior college, then Seattle University. So then um, now the University of Arizona. So you've had an opportunity to, to be the new guy a few times. Can you compare and contrast what it's like when you join a brand new roster? Uh, joining a brand new roster, I would say it would be more of a, um, you know, you just kind of like learn, you know, you learn from your previous, you know, experiences from being at uh, junior college, you know, being a freshman there and then coming to Seattle, you being a new guy there, you kind of just, you know, you kind of like just try to connect with the guys, you know, and, you know, fill apart, fill it together with the guys or whatnot. 
And, um, you know, you just build that chemistry with them guys. And then being here was the same thing, you know, but I'm older now, so I have a lot more experience. And I think the leadership thing um, I've always had, I feel like, throughout all my years, but I think here can like really help a lot because we have a lot of new guys and a lot of freshmen like that. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, Bruce Pasco, you're up next. Hey, uh, Daniel, I couldn't, uh, maybe it's my computer, but I could not hardly hear you at all. I was wondering if, if possibly you could speak up a little but I, and, and also I was just wondering, because I was wondering uh, if you can, uh, exactly what happened to your knee. And I assume from what I understand, it's, it's not related to that kneecap injury you had a couple of years ago. Can you tell me what's going on and, and uh, you know, what's going through your mind at this point? Yeah, so uh, since um, after we started practice again in the beginning of the season, my knee started, um, I was only not the uh, my kneecap problem. My was only started to buzz on me and I had like struggled like to, to run on it. So I had a surgery and now like I'm really focused like on everything that the doctors are telling me and the athletic stuff to come back better and stronger than before. Do you feel like you can, uh, you will get back at some point this season or do you think you might take the whole season to rehab the way it looks right now? I, I don't know yet. I, I will see what the doc doctors are telling me. Yeah, and again, was, was it like an ACL thing or was it something else? Uh, or? Something with my cartilage. Oh, like the cartilage, like an MCL deal, deal or something? Okay. All right, thanks. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, something with my cartilage. Yeah, cartilage, Bruce, yeah, yeah. not MCL, okay. cartilage. That's okay. Because it seemed like the, that's why I was wondering if there's a, maybe there is a chance, uh, you know, him playing later this season then. That's what I was wondering. You know how likely that would be. Um, all right, then last one for these guys, then we're gonna let them go. Ryan Wool. Hey Terrell, I know it's early on in practice, but I was wondering if Coach Miller has indicated what uh, three um, players out of the talented group of guards will be in the starting lineup this season. No, he hasn't announced anything like that yet. We're just uh, still, I guess you would say, learning to plays and you know making sure everybody can like you know. Uh, combination of different groups for players. So he hasn't like announced like who's starting lineup would be or, or anything. All right, thank you. All right, Terrell, Daniel, thank you for joining us. And